Howdy again, this is Tubal Kane, and in this video I'm going to show you how to thread on this 12 inch Atlas Craftsman lathe and that's been covered in many other videos but since I just uh, adjusted the gears in a previous video and I've got the gears set uh, to cut 20 threads per inch, 20 is the pitch, I'm going to go ahead and use that setting to uh, make a thread, show you how to do that. This will be a review for some of you, but some of you are new listeners, so you might find uh, this interesting. If you haven't seen how I set these, uh, go back to the previous video. But uh, now I'm going to take you through all the different steps that you need to, to uh, do or make in order to uh, have a setup that is suitable for cutting threads. So. Take notes if you need to, and you can rerun this video if some of these parts uh, are unclear to you. I've already prepared a blank, and this is half inch diameter stock, and there's about uh, two and a half inches extended out of the three jaw chuck. Now you can also uh, do this between centers, but I'm just choosing to, to do it between a chuck and uh, a live center here. This is a ball bearing uh, spring loaded center. so the the end of the work has been center drilled. Now I'm only going to do about an uh, inch and a quarter thread here as far as the length is concerned and I have an undercut here and that's the ideal way to terminate a thread because you need some way to, to stop the thread rather than just backing the tool out real quickly which is difficult to do especially for uh, first timers. So that's the setup of the workpiece. When you thread on the lathe, you really need to use a very slow spindle speed. And in this case, I'm in back gears. And notice the position of the belt here. That's in uh, position three. And I've marked these just with a magic marker. And in uh, back gears, that's 70 RPM. So you need to be in uh, a slow speed like that. Maybe even slower if you've never done it before. And you can speed it up as you go along, as you gain confidence and skill but you certainly don't want to do it in direct drive. Now over here we've got two pulley steps also and that's on the slower speed of the two. But again, back gears, slow speed, this is 70 RPM. The feed reverse lever is in this case in the top position and that will allow the carriage to feed toward the headstock. Now that may be different on your lathe depending on how many threads per inch you are cutting. So do a trial run on that to determine that it's moving in the correct direction. Now as far as the cross slide is concerned here, I brought the tool up against the work so it's almost touching the work and then I set the collar here on the cross feed for, uh, for zero. Now that's a very small collar and extremely hard to read. So I'm going to put a little white mark on that uh, in order to uh, uh, make it easier to read that as I, as I proceed to thread. It's not on zero right now, but I've, I'll, I'll set that to zero off camera here. Now in one of my videos, I made much larger collars for a lathe. That was a Logan lathe. And <clears throat> after you work with these smaller collars, you'll see that how necessary that is. And uh, in this particular case, there's just a little... Uh, slotted screw, but some lathes have a thumb screw on there that make it a little bit easier to adjust that. Now I haven't talked about uh, backlash, but you need to avoid backlash here both in your compound and your cross slide, which means you simply have backed it out and then fed it in and never feed it out again without taking the backlash out. And I've got a video on that too, and I just can't cover everything in uh, one video. The compound is set at uh, 29 degrees to the right, and that's not going to show up very well here, but uh, some books will say 30 degrees. Now this is a 60 degree thread, so that's one degree less than half of the 60 degree, and I'm not going to dwell on why we do that. If you disagree, disagree, set yours for 30, but either 29 or 30 is going to work, and I doubt very much if you notice any difference between the two. In the Atlas Craftsman book, you're going to find an excellent section on how to thread, but you can also refer to the South Bend How to Run a Lathe book, and that's excellent also. But there's approximately uh, 
30 pages here devoted to cutting threads on the lathe. So read through that and it'll certainly be helpful because there's all kinds of different threads that can be cut to Acme and Square and so on, but we're cutting the uh, simplest, which is a 60 degree V thread and by far the most common. I'm going to be using a, a pre-formed uh, 60 degree carbide tool in the Aloris holder, but if you do not have access to such uh, rather expensive tooling, uh, a 60 degree a uh, high-speed steel tool is going to work just fine and that is shown uh, in other videos that I have on how to grind this so you get an accurate one and you need a center gauge in order to grind your tool and in order to set it up and I'm going to show you that here just in a second and it's handy to have a thread pitch gauge and I've already got that set for 20 that's the, that's the 20 so that after I take a first pass sometimes I double check it to make sure that I am getting 20 threads per inch or whatever the the thread happens to be uh, again you might be using this type of tool holder in a lantern uh, tool post and there are many different kinds of, of uh, tool holders there are special threading holders and uh, there are Aloris cutting tools made for threading and just a, a host of them now as far as cutting uh, to diameter or to the depth of the thread, I'm just going to use a half 20 nut as my test. There are thread micrometers, there's many different ways of checking it and I uh, have covered that in other videos as well, but for a half 20 unified national fine thread, the major diameter of course is 500 thousandths and the minor diameter is 435 thousandths, so the difference between the two there is 65 thousandths, so the depth is about 34 or 35 thousandths. Now you may choose to feed that in with the uh, cross slide to that amount or just as a beginner thread until your thread becomes a sharp point and then start trying your uh, uh, your nut as a, as a gauge and do not overcut it. It's better to stop the lathe and uh, try it and have it not be quite deep enough and uh, continue with your threading than to have it all uh, uh, too deep where you have to start over. So that's my tools and I got some uh, uh, threading oil there as well. It's very essential that your tool be set at uh, the correct height, that is to the height of the dead center or the tailstock center. And in this particular type of tool holder here, I can just raise it and lower it with uh, this screw right here until I get it right at the correct height. And then with an Aloris holder, you of course just tighten it right here. Your tool needs to be perpendicular with the work or square with the, uh, the chuck or uh, 90 degrees and there's two ways of doing it and uh, with this type of tool I put a parallel in here between the tool holder and the face of the chuck and that squares it up uh, real nice and of course I've had uh, this loose and swing it back and forth until it's uh, parallel and even then I can back this out remove the parallel and uh, that is set now another way of doing it if you're not using this type of holder, if you're using a lantern type uh, tool pose, is to use your center gauge. So let's take a look at how to do that. And that's probably the way you're going to need to do it. Here's the other way, using a center gauge. And there's a little uh, accessory for center gauges that uh, holds it. It's a little bit easier than this. You might have seen me use it in other videos. But the uh, center gauge is up against the work. And uh, you can see that I've got the threading tool right into the V there. Usually you got to hold this, but I pre-did that to show you that it's square. And of course it was already square from the other method that I use, uh, have used. And I, I think you can understand why that is necessary. That otherwise you're going to get a cockeyed or a crooked thread. Now in this case here, I have a little bit more of the uh, quill sticking out of the tail stock than what I would like and this is the quill right here and that's necessary with this type of tool holder with the Aloris quick change tool holder or Dorian or import or whatever you have but generally we like to minimize this and this is a spring-loaded center 
Watch it closely as I bring it in. And that supports the work and keeps it from flexing. And then tighten your quill lock. I have, of course, tightened the uh, tailstock lock before. Now we are just about ready to start cutting. This is the half nut lever or the threading lever or the split nut lever and that's what we're going to use here in conjunction with the thread dial. Now you can see that coming around and there's an index mark here also and we will catch that for an even number of threads. This is 20 uh, threads per inch. We can catch it on uh, either the numbers, one, two, or the lines in between. Now, if it is an odd number of threads, you're going to catch it only on the numbers or only on the lines. And read about that in your book. There's a pretty good section on that. And uh, this is this lathe is kind of loud. All of my uh, or both of my Atlas lathes uh, sound like combines. I'm not going to be cutting yet. The, the tool is not in contact with the work, but here's what my hands will be doing. I'll have this set on zero, and you can see the white mark there. And I'm going to be watching the thread chasing dial, and when it uh, comes onto a number or a line, I will engage the half knot lever. And when it comes down, the tool comes down and into the undercut, then I will release the half knot lever. And I'll be doing uh, this. I'm watching the dial right now, and I've caught it. Now my eyes are up on the work, and I'm watching for the tool to uh, come into the undercut, and when that happens, I will raise this. Concentrate on what you're doing. Turn your phone off. I'm into the undercut. Then I back this out, return to the beginning, move the cross slide into zero again, where my white mark is, and then I can feed in just a few thousandths with the, uh, the compound rest. Remember, all of the depth will be achieved with this. Now, if you are feeding this in ten thousandths, it won't be taking off ten thousandths because we're going in at an angle. You need to get used to that because that might be a little bit misleading to you. Again, what I'm doing here is I'm watching the thread chasing dial. It's coming around to a line. I've caught it. And when it comes into the uh, undercut, I'll release it. I've taken a scratch cut off camera and now with the thread pitch gauge I'm just double checking it to see that my setting is correct and it is. Now let's see if I can position the camera to show you how this cutting is taking place and I'm not going to use oil for the first few passes just uh, for the sake of clarity. Alright, watch this. I caught it on the line. And you can see my shaving. I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and when it comes into the undercut I will raise the half nut level. Do not raise it until you come into the cut, or you can break the tool off or certainly spoil the work. Then I back it out about a turn or so, return the carriage into a zone here where nothing is going to touch, bringing it back into zero and looking at the cross feed. Now I'm feeding it in just a few thousandths with the compound. Alright, my hand's on the half nut lever, waiting for the number to come around, and I've got it. Release the half nut lever, back the cross slide. Bring it back in to zero and so on. If you miss the number or line here when you're uh, when you're threading and you go a little bit past, you will ruin the work. I guarantee it. 
So try to catch it right, right on the line. Each uh, lathe has a personality. You're going to find that some lathe is always going to go a little bit past the number or the line. And if that is happening and it is consistent, that is okay. So uh, do, a, do a practice be, before you uh, thread, uh, a rehearsal, the same as you would for uh, a piano recital or a play or anything else. You need a rehearsal. Continuing here. If you're comfortable at this point, you can speed the machine up a little bit. You will not lose your settings if you just change the belt. Missed the line, so I got to wait around until the next one comes. Generally for a fine thread you need a total of about uh, 10 or 12 passes, but I, I like to come up to the final dimension slowly and take several cuts without increasing the feed, just in case there's any flex in the work. And that cleans it up. I don't think I'm anywhere close enough to check it for size, but I'm going to do it anyway just to show you how. So I will back the uh, center out. Now never take the work out of the chuck until it's complete. Absolutely not. Now if you're holding your work between centers, mark the uh, dog slot that you're using and always return it to the same uh, slot or you will ruin the thread. And it's not quite ready to start or it's starting but it's only going on about half a thread so we got some more to go. I think this will be my half or my last pass and I have not increased the depth of cut. So this is just a cleanup cut and there's really virtually no chip coming out. Then you need to clean the thread. I don't like to use air pressure or air hose but Use a brush or blow it off, whatever your preference is, and uh, try it with your nut or however it is you're going to uh, test your thread. And there it is, going on uh, nice, nicely. Back that out some more. I'm going to run it all the way down to make sure that there's no tight spots. And now, at this point, it can be uh, taken out of the chuck and examined and measured if you need to or whatever, and uh, the job is done. And it is that simple. That probably took uh, 10 or 12 passes to do that. And uh, take your time. You can do it in fewer passes if you want, but I don't like to risk breaking the tool. And these carbide uh, pre-ground tools are just beautiful for this and so much easier to use. And uh, if you don't grind your tool right, you're going to have a little trouble. But these are foolproof but expensive. By the way, this is 12L14 uh, screw machine stock, so it is particularly easy uh, machining, free machining uh, metal, and I have talked about that before. Before I took it out of the machine, I took my uh, fine file and very lightly filed it as it was rotating to get any burrs off the top or to remove the very uh, sharp uh, edges on the top or sharp points if, if there are any or were any. Again, here's the, the nut. Now the nut might wiggle a little bit. Well, this one doesn't, at least not very much. But if the nut wiggles a lot, then uh, you're, you've gone too deep. Well, that's, that's a good fit. And the tool that I've used looks something like this. Matter of fact, it looks exactly like this. There is one broken off point there, but uh, there are three 
usable points on here, 60 degrees, and that was a, a Char's uh, product. You have to buy the insert separate from the holder. That's the holder number if anybody's interested. I don't work for them, but this is an Aloris holder. And if you've never used one of these, and I've only acquired this rather recently, so I really do uh, like that for threading, and you might see it in some of the other videos. Now remember that I have a complete course on the Atlas lathe, 40 chapters, and I think it's about 10 or 11 hours, and that's available. Uh, you see that I run a special on that from time to time where I cover uh, all of the uh, operations on an Atlas lathe, even in much greater detail than what, am I, what I'm doing here. Now in the next video, I'm going to go back to the gears and uh, the change gears, and I'm going to set it up for uh, longitudinal feeding just for turning on the lathe, not for threading, and that'll be much finer uh, feed than uh, for threading. So stay tuned for that in the next uh, chapter or video, I should say, in this uh, series. Tubal Cain saying so long for now.